All right, so my good friend Theo, the T3.gg himself, made a tweet that obviously I had to react and I had to look at. And it's starting to see why people like Go so much, ranked by speed. And if you don't know, this and here, the right side is kind of the zero, the slowest, and the left side is the fastest. And it's interesting, he has three categories, runtime performance, developer velocity, and compilation times. Basically ranks that are for runtime performance, Rust is the fastest, Go is kind of in the middle, and TypeScript is the slowest, uh, and we'll jump to compilation time that goes the fastest, then TypeScript in the middle and Rust the slowest for compilation time. But I think the most interesting one to talk about is the developer velocity here, where he ranks TypeScript as the fastest, Go in the middle, and Rust the slowest. Um, And one thing to note is it seems like Rust is, out of these three, the slowest out of these three categories for developer and compilation time, you kind of average it out. Go never being last place in any of these categories and actually being first in one of them. But I think developer velocity is definitely the most interesting bit here to explain. And one thing I like is actually Aiden's comment here that kind of summarizes, I think, a good point that I think is worth to keep in mind. If you guys like Go in this kind of content, make sure you click subscribe button. It does help the channel a lot. A lot of effort goes into these videos and it truly is the best way to support if you enjoy. But let's get back to the video. Developer velocity is extremely subjective to the engineer. I don't think this is a useful metric in this diagram. I would bet some money I could put together a basic OAuth flow or something and go faster than you could with Clerk, for example. The thing that I think is very interesting is the subjective part for developer velocity because it is worth mentioning here. So Theo is, for those who don't know, was actually an original Go developer. Theo, when he worked at Twitch, started writing Go code. I think he actually knew Go before TypeScript. And obviously, if you know Theo's content, he is fully the TypeScript guy, you can say that. So is there bait bias in this? Because I think the most accurate is Go, Rust is last. But between something like TypeScript and Go, this is where an argument I think could begin to happen. So I have this little diagram here and I'm going to populate this. But basically, the left circle is Go and the right circle is TypeScript. Now, all the points I'm going to type are going to help with developer velocity. And I actually want to start off with what I think both of them have in similar is great communities. Right, and I think this is actually very important because when you get stuck in an issue, when you get stuck in implementation, if you have a big, great community, you'll probably find the answer or a guide or something to do it quicker as opposed to something like an OCaml. And that just causes you to have to debug, find things out on yourself. Whereas in Go and TypeScript, such a large amount of people are using it. They probably face the issue already facing. Really, the, the core is in developer speed is I think the type systems. I think the proper type system, and this is gonna be you know a contentious point because you can say, well, people can type faster in JavaScript or, or, you know, when you don't have to worry about types, you probably go faster. I do agree to an extent, but I think with a properly typed system, you will actually write more efficient code. And I think in the long run, developer velocity benefits from having systems not panic or fail or crash when you don't have types. I think TypeScript has a more advanced type system where Go probably has what I like to consider everything you really need type system. That's irrelevant here. The fact of the matter is, they both have contracts, so functions that ha expect a certain type and will return a certain type based on the definition of the function or the contract. A point that I'll put for Golang is the standard library. Now, these are two completely different areas because in the TypeScript or JavaScript ecosystem, there is what I like to call a lib tool for that. Now, what does that mean? You can basically find any package in NPM, PNPM, whatever that does something for you in the JavaScript or TypeScript ecosystem. Where in Go, there's a likely that maybe it still exists, but it's definitely not going to be used. It's definitely not the go-to thinking pattern of developers. I would find that Go engineers typically try to build things from scratch. And could that take a longer time? Potentially, it depends on your knowledge of the standard library and how proficient you are with Go as a whole, because Go doesn't really make things complex for you, but it's understanding of all these systems and how they interact with each other. So then this, this last point I want to write for developer velocity that both of these share. In types of Go, you don't have to really focus on memory allocation, or different things of that nature. So go in TypeScript, no memory allocation handling. And I, I bet you some purists think of this as like a negative point that, you know, this makes the languages kind of less useful um, or the efficiency argument. But I think there's a core difference between something as low level like memory versus something, you know, a little bit higher like a type system. In memory, if you aren't careful, debugging a memory leak is not easy because going to the root cause isn't the same as find the root cause for a type issue 
issue where it clearly says, you know, this object doesn't have this type or this function function expects this type, but we receive this one instead. Memory allocation, once you have a bleed, it kind of seeps out to the rest of your code and the trace for that is just going to be a nightmare. And as I'm thinking kind of out loud, another point that I want to put that's in between going TypeScript and like I've used both these languages pretty efficiently is, you know, as easy as like, it's, it's just easy to read. You know what? Now that I think about it, is TypeScript easy to read or maybe like this is like here because some some advanced TypeScripts get pretty gnarly and aren't that easy to read. Whereas in Go, it's actually a lot easier to read. So I now that I'm thinking out loud, I think Go is easier to read than TypeScript, which makes the developer velocity just better. Uh, you can kind of understand what you wrote and understand what you wrote maybe two weeks ago faster than something in TypeScript or like, you know, when you're handling and juggling these advanced type systems, they can get pretty gnarly pretty quickly. But even with this poorly designed Venn diagram, I think the main point is it really depends on the user. Uh, I think developer velocity is, you know, especially when talking between Go and TypeScript, a person who's been writing TypeScript for the last two years is going to be faster at writing types than they are at Go and vice versa. Um, but I think just the core elements that these languages share, or these languages have, I think what that just defines why they're so popular. I think it defines why they're so good and why people choose to use them and why more people are talking about them. We see the Primogen uh, using more and more Go. We see people like Theo even ranking Go higher in his own ranks and even giving it a better ranking than TypeScript, uh, except for developer velocity. And I think one thing that TypeScript does have all in one libraries, right? All in one stacks. Like the T3 second example, right? Like you can deploy the T3 stack literally with one command and you have a full stack application that is type safe, has auth, uh, has database connections, pretty much has everything you wanted to. And you can't really beat that. Truthfully, you know, if you want, you can extract elements from that stack into your own code base. Uh, but recreating everything is going to be tough. And I think that's something that TypeScript and the TypeScript ecosystem has over the Go ecosystem is that there are these heavy communities that build things that are just hard to argue. And that does help with the developer velocity because if everyone takes care of the rest of the shit, the rest of boilerplate, I mean, it's going to make you faster what you actually want to work on. And I truly believe that your velocity of developer is backed by how passionate you want to implement that feature or the thing you want to build. If you have to build something like the auth for your stack or your app, and you just absolutely hate it and you resent the fact you have to do it, but you kind of drag your feet, you're going to be taking much longer than, you know, if you're excited about implementing the database connection layer of this system, you're just like gunning for it. You don't care how much time you're putting in because you're genuinely having fun. I think these are key things to keep in mind when talking about the developer velocity in these languages. But with all that being said, let me know what you guys think about this video. Do you agree? Do you like the points I made about developer velocity in Go and TypeScript? Do you like Theo? tweet there. I'll link, I left a link in the description below. Make sure you give him a follow and tell him Melky sent you. But let me know what you guys think of this video. As always, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe for more of this content. But as always, you gotta power it.